In this video, I'm returning to one of my favorite places for landscape photography, Moab, Utah. I've gotten a lot of great photos there in the past. There's one particular composition I've had in mind for a while that I just haven't been able to quite pull off. Will I be able to get it this time? Let's get started and find out. All right, hello everybody. I am in Moab, Utah, and it, the sun has just gone down. I've made a quick drive out here from my home in Colorado with the leaf, which is charging now. And I'm getting ready to head out to Canyonlands National Park this evening to photograph the Milky Way. There is a shot out there that I have had on my list for a couple years and things just haven't come together to capture it before. Um, I saw a window of opportunity with the weather this weekend and decided just to hop in the car and make a run out here and try and get that shot tonight. So We're gonna get some juice here in the car and head out to Canyonlands and get to shooting tonight. It looks like a beautiful night. The sky is nice and clear not too cold even though it's October now so we'll be heading that way shortly we'll see you out there Alright everybody, I have arrived at the Green River Overlook here in Canyonlands National Park. There is one other car here, a truck with a pickup camper on the back. But other than that, I have the whole place to myself and sounds like maybe they're uh, already in the camper, maybe getting ready to go to sleep. So I'll get my stuff out, get down to the Overlook and uh, get to shooting the Milky Way. Now, since it's night, you can't see this big view out in front of me of the Green River Overlook out there in the abyss as I'm kind of right on the edge of the canyon here at this overlook. But there's these, the canyon drops off to the white rim below and then the fingers of the canyon reach out towards us from the Green River below that. So that's what this looks like during the daytime. It's going to be a little different here at night. The idea is going to be to put the Milky Way like right over by the where the river is from this view. The nice thing this time of year is this view looks almost directly southwest, so right where the Milky Way is going to be before it sets. Downside is this is late summer and fall is the only time of the year you can get this shot, so that's why I've made this quick run out here today to do this, and we'll see what it looks like here shortly. All right, everyone, trying to get the exposure adjusted on the Osmo here to help you see that better. But on the back of the camera there, this is the shot I'm looking for. Got those fingers of the canyon coming towards us, the Milky Way up above it. I might go a little bit longer with my focal length just to really focus in on the canyon down there. So I'm first starting to play with it, but this is why I'm here. And it looks beautiful, doesn't it? And that truck that was up in the parking lot with the camper just took off, so now I do have this place all to myself. Which makes me very happy. Let's keep working on it. Alright, so I've done some testing with my 24-70 f2.8 lens. And I'm finding that I'm drawn to 
right about 35 millimeters, which I kind of thought would be the case as I plan this shot out in TPE. So I'm going to swap to my 35 millimeter f1.8 lens to get in as much light as possible and really photograph this scene at its best. So I'll get started with that and show you what I got. All right, everyone, this is the shot with my 35 millimeter f1.8 and trying to Get the Osmo to focus and show good exposure of it. There we go. That's not bad. But that is my shot. Milky Way is just about right in that perfect position, right where I want it over the canyon to line up beautifully. So I'm going to start firing off some shots to stack here in just a couple minutes, I think. So happy that after the nine hours to get out here today that this shot is working out just like I want it. Nice clear skies, nice view of the Milky Way, no smoke that I can see anyway. It's just a beautiful night out here in Canyonlands. It's been a long day, but it's worth it for this. See here, I've captured my foreground shot now as well for my shot with 35 millimeter. Try and get a little better detail there in the foreground. Um, and I'll blend that later in Photoshop. And uh, now I think I'm going to switch to my wider angle lens, my 16 to 28 zoom, and try and get a wider shot with more of the Milky Way. And we'll see how that contrasts with this one at 35 millimeters. And if I have time, I might even try a tighter shot with my 24 to 70. All right, I've put my ultra wide lens on there. So it's a 16 millimeters, and I'm getting ready to try some shots. I did mention earlier that this uh, overlook is kind of right on the edge of a cliff that drops down to the white rim below. And occasionally I am hearing some bats flying down beneath me and chirping as they go by looking for the wall themselves in the dark. All right, let's check out this shot. All right, here's what that view looks like at 16 millimeters. Try and give you a sense of it there with the Osmo. It's probably a little wider than I want. I'm gonna try and zoom this in just a little bit, recheck my focus, and try it again, maybe closer to 20 millimeters. Just zoom in a little bit so that canyon's not quite so distant in the shot. And you can see there, there's a lot of, there's kind of a gap there at the bottom. I could lift it up, but I kind of want to tighten it up just a little bit and try it again. All right, that's our shot at 20 millimeters, and I think that's kind of the sweet spot for an ultra-wide shot for this one. Just tight enough on the canyon below, quite a bit of the Milky Way up above it. A lot more than in that 35 millimeter shot. Um, it's a nice second option. I always like to give myself options, especially when I've driven nine hours to get here, including charging time. So yeah, I just like to give myself compositional options to work with later and see which one I like the best. It's always a good idea. All right, let's keep working on it. All right, so what I've done here is I've put my 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens back on and I've zoomed it into about 50 millimeters, which is a lot tighter than what I usually do for my Milky Way shots. But, like I said, I'm trying lots of different composition ideas while I'm here. And I'll turn off my headlamps to try and see if we can get a better look at that with the Osmo. So, tighter view of the canyon. You can see more of the river down below, a much tighter view of the Milky Way, if I can get it to adjust, I 
exposure there, although this is the long exposure shot from my foreground, and there it went. Yeah, well, that'll probably be my last shot with the big camera for tonight as the core of the Milky Way is slipping below the horizon. But before I leave, as I do sometimes, I'm going to set up my iPhone on the tripod and put it in RAW and see what I can capture in the night sky in night mode. So let's do that. Alright, so we've got the iPhone mounted on the DJI OM3, the Osmo Mobile 3, I guess was called back then. So we're going to open up the camera, and uh, we're going to put this in RAW mode, and it's automatically gone into night mode, so I'm going to extend that out to the longest shutter speed. And to keep it from not shaking, um, I'm actually going to use my Apple Watch as the remote trigger. And we'll see how that looks. Alright, so that's our first shot there. As you can see, it's picking up the Milky Way decently well. Not getting much detail in the foreground. Bring that back up for a second. But picking up quite a bit of the Milky Way and that's with you know Apple's standard detail crushing noise reduction on since I'm shooting it in raw once I get it onto Lightroom on my computer I'll be able to uh, dial back that noise reduction and bring out a little more detail I think but let's try some more of these all right there's one where I was able to get a full 30 second exposure with this breeze blowing on it on the gimbal that it's thinking I'm not holding it still enough some of the time. It's only giving me 10 seconds, but this one got the full 30 seconds. You can see a decent amount of detail there in the Milky Way. Still not much from the foreground, and with it being the iPhone, probably won't be able to pull much out of it. But I'm always interested to play around with it a little bit and see what this thing can see in the dark in raw capture night mode. I wish they gave me more control over the settings, and I wish they would let me capture long exposures in the Photoshop Lightroom app on here too, longer than 10 seconds. But, just wishes for now, right? And really this is just playing around to see what this tiny little phone sensor can do. It's about time to wrap it up. The Milky Way core has dropped below the horizon now. Time to get back to Moab and uh, get some more charge in the car and find a place to camp for the night. All right, while well, walking back to the car, I noticed some of those gnarly juniper trees along the trail that they kind of have all over the place out here. So I decided to uh, work with those a little bit and try and grab some shots with the Milky Way. But, uh, you know, trying to make the most of this long drive that I took to get out here. It's time to get back to Moab, get the car plugged in, and uh, figure out where I'm going to sleep for the rest of the night. Off we go. 
All right. It's the morning after. It took me a while, but I did finally find a campsite last night. I'm pulling in here in the dark. <clears throat> it was hard to tell what the views around are like, but it's pretty nice. All right, I'm loaded up. It's time to get back on the road and head towards home. Another long drive back, but it was worth it. Got some good shots. <laughs> 